Hello and welcome to part 6 of Let's Play Portal of Evil. Um, at the end of the last part, um, I was deciding whether I was going to fight the dinosaur alone or refuse to attack it. I'm going to fight it alone, so I'm going to turn to 251. Um, if you can hear a a buzzing noise, that's probably the fan that I have on because it's quite hot. Anyway, um, the hunters present you with a long spear and with it you advance towards the Triceratops which lifts its three-horned crested head and begins to bellow, warning you to stay away. As you stalk closer still to its nest of eggs, it scuffs the grass and prepares to charge. As the beast lowers its head and thunders towards you, you despair of ever defeating it. Um, that would be funny if that were the end of the game and that was it. As the beast lowers its head and uh, thunders towards you, you despair of ever defeating it. And that's the end. Anyway, that's the end of the game. Anyway, but it isn't. Anyway, Triceratops, skill 8, stamina 18. Your spear is useful in fending off the animal's charges. During this fight, increase your skill by 2 points. But it has little impact on the leathery, knobbly hide. Um, deduct only one point from the Triceratops' stamina each time you wound it. Its horns and its thick, muscular tail are formidable weapons. Um, deduct three points from your stamina each time it wounds you. If you're still alive after five rounds of combat, you are, you are relieved to hear the war cries of the other hunters as they join in the attack. Surrounded, the Triceratops is soon overwhelmed and slaughtered. Lovely. Anyway, um, it's, it's like a prehistoric abattoir. Anyway, um, uh, what are we doing? We are fighting the Triceratops. Let's do that now. Right. Triceratops skill 8 stamina 18 uh, enemy attack my attack. So, um, five rounds of combat I have to survive and I put my skill up two points. Um, it obviously can't... I don't know whether it can go over my initial skill or not. I mean... I mean, it, it, it didn't say I couldn't and it is only temporary. So, I'm going to put it up to to 12 for this fight, um, just for the duration of the fight. So I'll put it down to 10 afterwards. Um, I really wish I can get my skill up to um, put my skill up to 11 permanently. Anyway, um, we're fighting the Triceratops. So 8 and my skill is 12. Um, so I need a cube, two cubes. There we go. Damn, this program is dodgy. Yep, number of sides. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Um, that's what I wanted. What does that do then? Nothing. Num and um, number of sides. It's weird. Can I type something in? No, I can't. Anyway, um, right, cubic dice. Um, two of them. So the yeah, Triceratops goes first. It gets a two, so that's uh, a ten. And I get the 6, that's 18 because I'm on 12 skill now, so um, 10 to 18. Um, to 18, so that's that. So it loses, uh, it's down to 16 now. So I just have to survive 5 attack rounds. Um, it's a 5, that's 13, I get 7, that's 19. So 13 to 19. Um, so another it's down to fourteen. What am I doing? Right, that's two attack rounds. Um two, that's ten to twenty three, that's thrashed it. So ten to twenty three. That's down to twelve now. I haven't lost any stamina yet. Um easiest triceratops in the world. And I've just remembered I'm only putting it down one point, aren't I? So I've done, th I've hit it three times, so it should be down to 15. That should be 17. 
And that should be 16, and that should be 15, because I'm putting it down one point down there because it's a Triceratops. I was just about to say this is the easiest Triceratops ever, but... Um, yeah, it's only down to 15 because I've won three attack rounds. It hasn't hurt me, but remember I have to get off uh, three stamina points every time it hurts me. Right, so just two more attack rounds. Um, it's a 9, that's uh, 17. Wait, yeah, 17. And I get 3. That's uh, 15. 17 to 15. I spoke too soon. It's hurt me now. 17 to 15. So that's, that's still four attack rounds, though. So, um, wait a minute. I put that in the wrong one, haven't I? Yeah, I have. Um, so it should be 17. I'm not with it today. Quite tired. Uh, 17 to 15. So I get put down to to 12 stamina points because I is 3 for this Triceratops. Um, so last attack round um, gets a 10, that's 18, I get 7, that's 19, so 18 to 19. Okay, that's the end of that, so my skill goes back to 10. Um, Triceratops goes down to 16 stamina and it got 18 to 19, so why 16? It should be 14. I can't count. Right, there we go. Okay, so that's five attack rounds. Um, uh, Slive after five rounds of combat, blah blah blah. So 390. Let's go there now. That was quite a messy fight there because I, I forgot it was one point instead of two points. And I wrote it in the wrong place. Um, uh, your fellow warriors perform a war dance round the carcass of the Triceratops. The tribal bard improvises verses to commemorate your bravery. When the celebrations have quietened, uh, you hold a council of war. At the moment, you are very close to the road that runs between the portal, known to the people as the Sacred Cave, and the tyrant warlord's headquarters. The shaman is sure that the warlord intends to leave his headquarters tomorrow, taking his remaining slave warriors with him back to call. The shaman's plan is to set an ambush at the Sacred Cave with the aim of killing the warlord and rescuing Anxis, Queen of the People. You can see no fault in this strategy, but you are impatient of any delay. You suggest that you could attempt a solo mission to infiltrate the Warlord's headquarters today. The warriors tell you that beyond the ridge at the far side of the grassy plain there is another path that leads along a valley towards the Warlord's base. Will you return in triumph with your fellow warriors and prepare with them for tomorrow's ambush, or will you set out alone to cross the ridge and follow the path to the Warlord's headquarters? Uh, we're going to return in triumph, so 213. The warriors of the people carry you and the body of the Triceratops in triumph to their hilltop town. Dinosaur steak tastes surprisingly good. You spend the rest of the day feasting, resting and basking in the adulation of the townspeople. You may restore up to six points of stamina. Good. Because that hurt quite a bit. Um, yeah, the Triceratops. So put it back up to 15. Lovely jubbly. Right. The following morning, you and the shaman lead all the fighters of the people to the sacred cave. You settle down to lie in wait on a hillside overlooking the road that leads to the warlord's headquarters. Your scouts run back with the news that the enemy is approaching. Soon you can hear the marching feet and see the cloud of dust that they are raising. A long column of slave warriors comes into sight. Among the skeletal forms is a chariot drawn by elven slave warriors whose occupant must be the warlord a giant of a man with a bulbous head. A second team of slave warriors pulls a wheeled cage containing the proud figure of a tall human woman. The people cannot contain their anger. Anxious, they cry, our queen, we will re uh, release you. And they hurl themselves into battle. Anxious is heavily guarded. Your comrades are attacking the strongest part of the slave warrior army. Would you help them, turn to 344, or would you ignore everything that distracts you from confronting the warlord himself? Um, yep, yeah, we'll ignore everything and attack the warlord, turn to 70. Um, the way I normally do this, actually, is I normally go to the warlord's lair, and there is a bear who's named Derlin, and he was um, the warlord's partner because the warlord is actually Horfak, and um, Horfak would turn into the warlord, the two miners, and try to turn Derlin into a slave warrior, and Derlin is now a bear, and you, you can release Derlin, and he will... Um, 
and he will attack the guard so you can go to Horfak more easily. Also you can rescue Anxis there and she recognises the tattoo that you have so she will uh, help you as well. You can either get her or Derlin to help you. I normally get Derlin to help me because it's quite funny. He's dressed as a clown and in a cage. Anyway, um, I normally don't go this way but I thought I'd do it a bit different this time. So we're going to turn to 70 we're going to turn to 70 and we are going to... yeah here we are you fight your way towards the warlord who is trying to steer his chariot through the melee to the sacred cave you leap up alongside him push him out of the chariot then jump down to the ground beside him he turns to face you and you recoil in horror his head swaying on his shoulders like a huge balloon is a bulbous misshapen lump of flesh his face is stretched and distorted the features lost among rolls of blotched and flaking skin you are separated from the main battle by the bulk of the chariot and in, the com and, and in the comparative calm, the warlord taunts you. You dare to face me? Fool, I am Horfak. My strength alone could defeat you. With the portal, I am, I am invincible. Feel my power. He waves a hand and the air vibrates. Bolts of black lightning crackle along his arms as he unsheaths his two-handed sword. If you are wearing the Mad God's mirrored helmet, or have another mirror, you can interrupt Horfax gloating and place the mirror in front of his face. Turn to 330. Otherwise you waste no more time but attack. We do have a mirror, so turn to 330. What's this? Horfak hisses as you push the mirror in front of his eyes. You have the audacity to bring this thing? His voice fades as he stares at his own reflection. He moves a hand up to his face and touches the distended flesh. A low moan issues from his swollen lips, and his body seems to shrink as he stumbles backwards. The black lightning falters and then disappears from his arms. Horfak clutches his great head between his hands and shouts into the air, What have you done to me? You didn't tell me it would get worse. I won't be part of you any more. Leave me. Get out of my brain. No. No, not that. No. Horfax's voice is cut off and his body stiffens. His eyes stare ahead and his limbs begin to move in the mechanical manner of the slave warriors. Horfax has been taken over by the portal. You hear the people cheer as the slave warriors, no longer helped by Horfax's will, become slower and easier to fight. You face what remains of Horfax. If you win this fight, the victorious people will hail you as their hero, but you know that the portal still exists. To save Kool, you must just, you must try to destroy it. You make for the sacred cave. Okay, so we have to fight Horfak, 810. This should be an easy fight. If you don't have the mirror, he's a lot harder. I think his skill is um, 14 or something. So you need the mirror to... You know, he isn't unbeatable, but... Um, if you don't have, if you have to find him as skill 14, it's very difficult. Um, so you need a mirror. That's why they they offer you a mirror several times uh, throughout the book, just to make sure that you have um, that that uh, you know, just to make sure that you have the opportunity of um, weakening him, because he is very difficult without a mirror. And I think also he has another attack with the lightning as well, if you don't have a mirror, I think. Anyway, so 810. Um, so we're fighting him now. My skill is 10 still, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so let's get the dice and do this. Okay, he gets a 7. Um, that's uh, 15. I get 9, that's 19. So 15 to 19. Oh. hate it when it does that. All right, um, so he's down to eight now. We nearly finished the book. Okay, he gets four, that's uh, twelve, and I get eight, that's eighteen, so twelve to eighteen. So he's down to six now. Six, that's fourteen. Seven, that's seventeen. So 
14 to 17. Easy fight. So he's down to 4 now. Gets 4, that's 12. 7, that's 17. So 12 to 17. I think that was yeah, it's supposed to be a, a, a one there. I don't know why it, I made it apostrophe. I must have missed the the key. Anyway, so he's down to two. So one more hit, and he's mine. Okay, seven. That's um, fifteen. Was that? Did I put that? Start? Yeah, fifteen, and I get seven at seventeen. So. 15 to 17, which means he's dead. That's the end of Horfak. Done it again, put an apostrophe instead of a 1. So Horfak is now dead, so that's the end of him. Okay, so we've killed him, but you know that the portal still exists. To save Call, you must try to destroy it. You make for the sacred cave, turn to 369. Now you must have left the Ignea light here, otherwise the game is over. The torch that you hid in a cleft near the cave entrance is still there. It has burnt away almost to nothing, but a glowing fragment remains. You blow on it and manage to coax a flame into life. You enter the cave. Before you stand the portal, its black stones glowing with malignant force. You have passed through it once, and it cannot harm you directly now. But you know that if you return to call, vast armies of slave warriors stand between... Um, between you and Klein Castle. If you have left a sack of Ignealite resting against the foot of one of the, the megaliths, turn to 253. If not, turn to 89. We have. If you haven't, it's the end of the game, and it says you hope to get some people down there to pull the stones apart, but you know it's a lost cause, and that's the end of the game. And um, you have to bury the portal and until someone uh, comes and finds it again or whatever so it's a nasty end so you want to go to 253 by leaving the Ignea light there which we have done you step through the portal and you are once again in the cavern deep below the cloud high mountains you look for the sack of Ignea light it is still there resting innocuously against the portal's black stone with one last glance at the sunlit jungles of the lost world you thrust your flaming torch into the fine powder then retreat to the edge of the cavern. The sack bursts open and a cloud of dust settles all over the black blocks of carved stone. For a few seconds a loud sizzling fills the cavern and the surface of the portal bubbles and writhes as the stone is melted, recongealing instantly into a smooth, featureless lump of fused rock. There is a moment of silence and then an indescribable brain-curdling noise as as of the rending of the substance of the universe, a scream fading into infinite distance. You know that the portal is destroyed. As you make your way out of the mine, you come across groups of slave warriors. Most of them are dead, but a few, those most recently converted, are recovering their wits. You try to comfort them, but you are anxious to return to Klein Castle. Turn to 400. End of the game. Um... You blink in the daylight at the mine entrance and descend into the forest, where you find the same thing. All the slave warriors are either dead or they are no longer slaves. You keep going until you reach the edge of the forest, and Klein Castle is in sight across the meadows. The landscape before you has been transformed. Farmland has been dug up and turned into fortified earthworks and networks of trenches. Siege engines litter the fields. As you approach Klein Castle, the town's bells begin to ring. The forest gate swings open and the Margrave rides out at the head of a small column of wounded knights. You tell him that the slave warriors are all gone. Praise the gods, he breathes. These are the only soldiers left who are fit to fight. You have saved the town. Later, at a private meeting, Gloton and the Margrave invite you to attend a public ceremony at which you will receive your own weight in gold, as well as other riches. But strangely, you decline their offer. Gold seems to have lost its attraction, at least for now. You accept a chest of gems and a good pack course, and you slip quietly away from Klein Castle. Many others leave the area too. The cloud-high mountains lie undisturbed again. And that is the end of Portal of Evil. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'm going to eventually. I will do some other books. I'm 
I really like House of Hell, that's an excellent book, and uh, Island of the Lizard King is a good book as well, and Vault of the Vampire, and of course the classic Death Trap Dungeon. All of those I want to do. Um, I only like doing... the only... Um, the only fighting fantasy books I really enjoy are the ones like Portal of Evil and the, and, uh, the Warlock of Firetop Mountain, the ones about swords and dragons and things. There are other ones, futuristic ones, such as um, Freeway Fighter, that's about a car. This one's based in space. Um, House of Hell technically isn't one of those. It's actually a modern day one. You're a man who gets, um, in a, who, who gets trapped in a horrible house that's where evil goings on are are occurring and because you break down in the, in the middle of the night and ask them for assistance and you get trapped in the house it's not a, a swords and sorcery sort of game book but it is a really good one it's the only it's it's the only one that isn't about swords and every and and everything that I really like, um, House of Hell. It's an excellent book. Um, I suppose, really, you could say I hate the futuristic ones. The freeway fighters about a post-apocalyptic Earth, and the space ones are all terrible, in my opinion. Terrible. Um, they're just they're just not very good. I don't think space travel and everything. There's there's too many possibilities in space, really. I mean, at the end of it, a lot of the space ones they boil down to: would you go on this planet or would you go on that planet? And it just it, it doesn't it doesn't seem natural to me. Uh, the books like this one, we are we're in a a, a dungeon. Uh, you know, it, it's more sort of it it fits the formula better, I think. Uh, that sort of genre. Um, but um, yeah, I definitely like House of Hell, Island of the Lizard King, Death Trap Dungeon, um, Vault of the Vampire, and there's also two sequels to Warlock of Firetop Mountain. There's uh, Return to Firetop Mountain, that's okay, and then there's uh, Legend of Zagor, that's the third one. Um, each one has uh, Zagor, the warlock, has been resurrected by some reason or some... Um, way and you have to defeat them again uh, they're not as good as the first one of course but but they're still pretty good adventures in their own right um, I might do them eventually but for now I'm going to stop doing these books um, even though I will eventually do House of Hell, Vault of the Vampire I Island of the Lizard King and uh, Death Trap Dungeon, I will do them eventually but I'm going to go back to normal games my next video is definitely going to be a playthrough of the Sega Master System game um, Sega um, it's sort of like uh, R-Type, but another one like R-Type, Aerial Assault, Transbot. I will eventually do Transbot as well. Uh, Transbot, uh, but it's it has three difficulty modes, and hard mode is ferocious. Um, I'm going to do it on hard mode. You can either choose, you can do uh, two characters. Um, one character has some power-ups already in place. The other character is the most basic. So if you choose the most basic character, which is Proko Junior, you have to you have to power up more because um, the the other character, Tyat Young, he's already a little bit powered up. So you don't need as many power-ups. Anyway, uh, I also have to complete that game three times because there's multiple ways through to the ending and the last there are three last levels and I have to do each one so I'm going to have to complete it three times which means three videos which means three times the fun um, anyway so yeah that'll be my next video series um, um, let's play Sega on the Sega Mars system so I hope you uh, look forward to that one and uh, watch it when I um, eventually upload it and then after that do some more Mars system games such as Batman Returns and uh, Bank Panic and My Hero and all those things. Enduro Racer. I plan to do them all. Anyway, um, thank you for watching again and bye bye.